Welcome to the Sovereign Futures Podcast. I am your host, Yvonne de la Flor. The Sovereign Futures Podcast is a sharing space of transformational interviews, sacred teachings, power imagery processes, innovative futuring tools, and topics that can help you design and sculpt your desired futures into your now. Some of our podcasts will be translated into Spanish to bridge cultures where we share the journey of consciousness together. Welcome to the Sovereign Futures Podcast. I am your host, Yvonne de la Flor. And this podcast is a contribution podcast for humanity. It's a podcast that last year uh, we did it bilingual. I venture into translating incredible speakers, authors into English language or into Spanish language so we could build a bridge between cultures. And this year I decided to go fully in, in English. I keep contributing to Latin America, uh, tremendous amounts of free videos and live streams and a lot of contributions in Spanish. Uh, anyone that wants to find my Spanish content, quien quiere encontrar mi español, mi contenido en español, just go to Facebook, Ivonne de la Flor Latinoamérica. Se van a Facebook, Ivonne de la Flor Latinoamérica. And that's where, I, where, where all my Spanish content is. And also we have a newsletter where we have both content in English and Spanish. And we have YouTube that is about to reopen. I have many YouTubes, by the way, because, you know, I used to be married and I have changed my last name a couple of times. So my YouTubes have evolved with that too. But uh, my new YouTube is about to be open. So you can find me there as Yvonne de la Flor or de la Flor Teachings. And you can find anything on my offerings and my events and all the cool collaboration that I have with other teachers, with other speakers at our website, www.delaflorteachings.com. Anyways, a couple of announcements first. Our doors for our Convergence Leadership Inner Circle is closed. A couple of people began to send me messages asking me if this uh, form, if this container that I have, this is the third year I'm serving people through it, which is Ancient Spiritual Traditions Delivered for the Modern Times, asking me if it was open. You know, we go very, very ancient wisdom, like the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, we talk about principles in the Bible, uh, Patanjali, sutras, and then we implement them and use them for the modern times. But right now that portal is closed. I am considering, I was not going to open it next year, but the family keeps growing. So the next cycle of convergence will be most probably until 2022. Right now, what I have upcoming is in August, I have the certification level one and level two of Futuring. Futuring is a system that helps you design, architect, sculpt, and predict your own futures, but most important, create them based on the past as a reference, not as a place of residence, being present in the now. We are able to design brilliant futures for all of our areas of our human experience. I also have for the first time the transcendental rebirthing, uh, not a certification, but a training for online. So I'm exciting for, excited for that. Also, a couple of news. We just recently opened the International School of Futuring. You can check all the links on my website and also the School of the Codes of Ag, which is an aspect that I've loved since very young. I've been uh, devoted and uh, really, uh, this is more my artistic side, to create sacred geometry codes. I love sacred geometry. I love mathematics. I love numbers. I didn't love it when I was at school, though. But now, <laughs> you know, when I'm not at school, I love it. And so that school is opening. I have a couple of classes. I have the first class that is going to be launching Uh, we don't know yet if it's in March or April, but most surely it's in March. It's with Grace Terry. It's called the Codes of Futuring. And that's the first class that the school, the school of the Codes of I will be delivering. So all of that, you can, you can check all of the news in our newsletter. You can check all of the news in our website. And you can also send us a message too. And last but not least, our documentary film was launched. So now you can watch it and see it. Go to my website to see how you can watch it. The documentary is called United State of Mind, featuring the great minds of Richard Roth, Bentino Massaro. 
Alan Cohen, uh, Kia Sher, Chick Mormon, just incredible teachers speaking about the celebration of unity and diversity and the future of this unity, specifically now that diversity is the name of the game. Anyways, with all of these announcements, because I am my own sponsor, I am sponsored by myself, by my company, the La Flora Teachings, and Asin Media, who is our editor and our producer. And with that said, now I'm going to go in and introduce you to my guest. I am super excited because I it's the second time that I bring him. He's the first one to come back. The first of my guests that is uh, to come back. And the reason why is because we had a great podcast, a great podcast that we recorded, and it was in English and Spanish. And though people were so kind and generous that uh, that they were able to learn a new language, that they were able to, you know, do brain gym with both languages, it's challenging for people sometimes uh, to be listening to two languages uh, with this speed <laughs> right, that I have. I'm like a Mexican uh, speedy Gonzalez in a female form. So I translate in English and translate in Spanish. So a lot of people really loved my guest, my adored guest, and uh, they wish we would have done it only in one language. So he's back. His name is Alex Lucky. And very briefly, I will remind you a little bit of his earthly accomplishments plus an incredible soul that he is. He's truly an evolutionary soul. His passion and love for humanity is, you know, I, I, I give him five for that. Uh, you, uh, it's incredible. He really has a romance with creativity creation. He's an incredible author. Uh, published many times bestseller books. You can find all his work on Amazon or just by Googling his name, Alex Slucky. He is an artist, a photographer, a singer, an incredible, really, I tell you, spiritual teacher. And he, I'm going to say this, he's the modern Merlin. He's the modern Merlin for these times, for the times that humanity needs. He is impeccable in his wisdom, incredible at uh, human rights and of what is right and justice. And he also has one of the things, an incredible sense of humor that I hope one day he can talk to you about it. But also he has, I'm going to say this, evolutionized or revolutionized the way Tarot is experienced. I been, you know, my own mother, her, her mother, who was born in Cuba, was something called a Santera. Don't ask. One day I will do a podcast about that. But she used to read the cards and the tarot and all of that. And so I had experienced before in my life tarot readings and all of that, but I was really not connected to that. I thought it was really superstitious and and no, I, it didn't feel like high frequency. But what Alex has done with the tarot, and he'll share with you a little bit about it, is really use all of his spiritual work of more than 25 years now. All of his wisdom, his heart in the right place aligned with his mind. And he really designed a new way of reading, experiencing, and using the tarot as a blueprint for the soul, as a map for the soul. So I love it. I'm telling you, anytime I, I require advice because I need it often. And I, uh, and I said it in the last podcast, he was here. I reach out to Alex. He's my ally, my beloved best friend, my family. I love him to life, not to death, to life. And he's back with us in the podcast. So, and uh, with that, welcome back, sweetie. Oh my welcome God. Back. Thank you. <laughs> what a <laughs> shot of adrenaline, dopamine, melatonin, <laughs> serotonin, <laughs> just to listen to you. Thank you for this beautiful, beautiful, heartfelt welcoming. And I'm very happy that we're going to be able to flow so much uh, more intensely by focusing on a single language. So thank you for that as well. I think it's going to be a lot of fun as yeah, well. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm hoping, I'm going to say something publicly. No no uh, compromise here, <laughs> Alex. No. But I hope it, I'm hoping to have him really often. I hope, I'm hoping that Alex becomes an intrinsic part of what Sovereign Futures uh, is. So anyway, I'm in. <laughs> go, go Thank on. you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, it's an exciting time that we're living in, uh, regardless of what we call the media, the news, etc. I think that uh, self-reference, you know, self-directed learning, 
the opportunity to ascend, as we've been talking about, in a way that feels smooth for us and uh, profound and transforming, I think it's the way to go. And you were mentioning about Tarot. I didn't remember that your mother used to be so involved in the card reading uh, endeavors. And yes, uh, I think that Tarot is a living tool. It's a living tool that can transform our lives very dip- deeply because um, it has so much knowledge inscribed in so very few images, in only 78 archetypes, in 78 arcana, as they call them, uh, you know, the major arcana, the minor arcana. There's so much information about who we are as human beings that it is it continues to be an undeniable path for developing wisdom, for developing success. I've actually been thinking about a way to convey the success principles inside the tarot that are already inscribed there and to make it very evident for more and more people in the world to be aware at how powerful a tool this is. Every time I teach a class, every time I learn something new, every time I turn one of the cards, I'm just surprised at how the soul is speaking to us in this very symbolic language, Yvonne. So it's I just amazing. This, I love this, honey. I love that you said that because, by the way, everybody, I call him honey. So <laughs> for you to know, if I say honey or if he says honey <laughs> to me, it, that, that means something great is going to emerge from it. It's a little clue, it's language. But I do want to uh, emphasize on that, Alex, because, you know, I'm recently studying um, uh, well, I've been a, stu- a student, as you know, of, of many years of the work of someone, uh, of Joseph Campbell, who was, and Carl Jung, who, mm-hmm. who were very, very imbued in mythology, in archetypes, in, in symbology, and what it does for the human spirit, for the human soul. And recently, recently, I, I read a book, I don't remember the name, something about Saturn, in, an incredible, powerful book, that it said how we use symbols and images to be able to communicate with our unconscious and subconscious mind and for the soul mm-hmm. to have a venue of expression when especially nowadays you know that we are so focused on analytical thinking instead of critical mm-hmm. thinking right where we're built we're bombarded with images from the media from society from from magazines from what life should be that we have kind of go zombie or dormant in, in listening to the symbols and the imagery of the soul so our soul our consciousness if it has a tool to speak to us, it's going to use it. And I love that you use the tarot the way you use it because I'm truly, you know me, I'm, 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 I love, I'm a mystic, deep, spiritual seeker, but I'm also very practical. So it, it's sometimes it's a challenge for me to have anything external speaking to me, but the way you use it is so benevolent. And the way you exalt this imagery speaking to the soul, I just love what you just said. So carry on. So yeah, I totally agree. One of the things that, well, I have to give a little bit of a background of uh, how I've been working and how it developed the way that I arrived uh, to the conclusion that actually uh, doing tarot was even a higher frequency than what I was doing with angels and archangels in the past. So many of you may or may not have heard in the last podcast that I, that I started channeling angels and archangels, ascended masters, uh, very early in my life. It's already, you know, I'm halfway through that journey. Uh, I yeah. turned 50 very recently, but I started when I was 25. And I was very disconcerted at the experiences that I was having because I never expected, uh, you know, like all of a sudden from not believing in anything uh, except for the arts. And, you know, my belief was in beauty. My belief was in the arts. And I, yeah, I did read a lot of books for self-development, but they were not uh, mystically oriented, honestly. And suddenly these angels start speaking to me after I started uh, looking for very scientific proven meditation, such as MT uh, or TM. TM, yeah. Yeah, I... It's a mental meditation, everyone. Yeah. For those of you who do not know, it's not trademark. It's no, no, no. Mental meditation. <laughs> I like transcendental meditation because I'd had a scientific background of all these studies from different universities. And this is why I chose it. I didn't want anything that was just, uh, ideal, ideally, um, hard to prove, you know, because 
I was more of a scientific uh, 